Hey, what's good, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson, BamaInsider.com, June 17th. Hope you had a refreshing weekend. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers out there. And shout out to all the single moms holding it down. You know, no matter if you're a father or a mother, you know, raising a young mind is a very important part of this society. So if you've been a parent, I'm a parent, you know, cheers to you. It's never perfect, but the children are. So Hope you had a refreshing weekend today. We uh, we got a lot to talk about. And if you head on over to BamaInsider.com, you can read a ton of nuggets dropped by Andrew Bone. Um, we'll get him on the program later this week to talk about a big weekend that featured several five-star prospects that were in town. You had Eric Gilbert, the five-star tight end. And Andrew Bone has the latest on a very heavily recruited prospect out of Georgia. Andrew Bone also has the latest on Justin Rogers, a five-star who's currently committed to Kentucky. He's a very important prospect to keep tabs on for the class of 2020. Six foot four, 315 pounds, posted a picture on Twitter of himself with Butch Jones. He said, that's my guy. Uh, Tons of nuggets right now on BamaInsider.com. And in case you missed it, over the weekend, it's official. Alabama bolsters offensive line with graduate transfer from Florida State. Landon Dickerson has announced that he will head to the Crimson Tide as a graduate transfer. So that means he'll get ready to play uh, this coming season for the Crimson Tide. Now, can he cut the roster? He's dealt with a lot of injuries. If you look up Landon Dickerson on Florida State's roster, looks like a promising prospect. Uh, Six foot six, 308 pounds. Looks like he could provide some depth at the guard position, but he's been injury plagued the last couple years. So if you want to read more on Landon Dickerson, head on over to BamaInsider.com. Hey, if you're just a YouTube subscriber and you want to become a part of the premium message board community at BamaInsider.com, go to the website. Promo code at checkout is simply Roll Tide. If you're a college student, hey, hit me up, Kyle at BamaInsider.com. I'll send you our college promotion. Now, today on the show, I want to talk to you about Bama fatigue. All right, call into the show, 205-686-3604. I want to hear from you on Bama fatigue. Is it real? Does it exist? What is Bama fatigue for you? As an Alabama Crimson Tide football fan, when you look at the 2019 schedule, what do you see? I mean, from the front end of the schedule, what are your thoughts against a game like Duke? What are your thoughts against a team like New Mexico State? Yes, they go to South Carolina, but they're almost a three-touchdown favorite. Then they got Southern Miss and Old Miss. That's the front end of the schedule. Bama fatigue, is it sitting in with the fan base for the Crimson Tide? Hey, I was at the spring game this past spring. And while Alabama said that 65,000 attended, I'm not sure if that was a true number, right? Let me know. Call into the show and let me know if Bama fatigue has set in. Are you guys a little bit tired of the of the schedule? Should it be tougher? Is it is the schedule where it needs to be? Do you feel that Alabama's dominance has decreased your interest to going to Crimson Tide football games on a hot, muggy Saturday? Remember, Saban got after the college students last year for leaving early. But at the same token, some of these games, just like you know, thirty five point favorite. Um, 40 point favorite. Does that affect your feelings toward the Crimson Tide? And also from the recruiting standpoint, yeah, Clemson right now is leading the country with the most five stars, but Alabama is just two spots behind them at number three. So when I talk to people here in Tuscaloosa, they're like, oh yeah, you know, Alabama is going to roll right through their schedule up until the final point of the season. That's when we need to really tune in to dial in. And then recruiting wise, they're like, yeah, we're going to finish number one or two. So has that fatigue of just being number one, being at the top, has that set in with you as a fan? Do you still get pumped up for the season like you used to? Let me know, 205-686-3604. I'm going to play some uh, some calls that we received over the weekend. I'll answer those calls, and then we'll move on with the program. But let me know what you think, 205-686-3604 is the call-in number. And our first caller is actually from El Paso, Texas, and he's asking about something that happened during the national title game. Listen in closely. This is a pretty interesting call, and it refers to what Nick Saban was doing towards the end of the national championship game. I, for 
from El Paso, Texas. I have something on my mind. It's been been on my mind since the championship game. I never saw any coverage about this. Um, not on the radio. I didn't listen to any. I didn't see any on television. Um, sometime during the late third quarter of the championship game, Coach Saban was pretty upset, and he he was walking around, and he was shaking hands with uh, certain individuals, some people in the stands, some people on the on the sidelines, and um, I, I've always wondered what that was about. Uh, it seemed like he was upset about the way the game was going, and uh, I saw it as a as a sign of him giving up or thanking certain individuals for, for not giving up. I don't know. I'd like to know your take on that. Hey, thanks for the call, by the way. I didn't see Saban doing that at the end of the game, shaking hands with um, players or anyone in the stands. I, I must have missed that. If anyone else saw that, please chime in in the comment box. Um, it, I'm not one to feel that Saban is ever going to just – hang up the white flag and say, we've surrendered. I, I just don't think Saban's like that. Maybe he was encouraging his players to get after it, to show some fight and show some resiliency because even when your back is against the wall and even when the game seems out of reach, it's never over until it's over. I mean, we've seen this time and time again, not necessarily with the Alabama Crimson Tide, but we've seen this in college college athletics. We've seen it in, in pro sports. It's never over until it's over. So I feel that his message was probably, hey, stick with it. How are you going to do when your back is against the wall? And that is is my guess. But I didn't see Saban shaking hands with anyone um, towards that later part of the game. I saw him ticked off. <laughs> I saw him uh, upset. I saw him frustrated. I saw Alabama frustrated after they were uh, getting their tails kicked by Clemson. But I didn't see Saban shaking hands with anyone in, in the stands or, or – uh, on the field for that matter. All right, moving on to our next call in. We have Mark. Mark is calling in and he's talking about uh, what he wants to see from the offense. My name is Mark and I would like to see the University of Alabama run the ball again, create the power run and utilize the uh, RPO less, throw deep when it's uh open and just continue uh, to work on establishing a strong running game again uh, like we had three or four years ago. Yeah, thanks for the call, Mark. Uh, we talked about this last time on the show. You know, uh, I think a lot of our callers, a lot of our viewers want to see Alabama pound the rock. And it's a, it's an interesting equation when you look at this offense because there's so many weapons from an offensive standpoint. And it, the offense was effective last year, almost too effective sometimes. And we put the defense out on the field. I think a lot of people want to see more of a balanced approach, at least speaking with the callers and, and talking with the people from BamaInsider.com. They'd like to see a more balanced approach. I personally would like to see Alabama have a more balanced approach, but also control that time of possession. I mean, yeah, it's nice to score in a minute. It's nice to score in uh, under two minutes, but at the same time, you're putting the defense out on the field for a tremendous amount of time, and that can create problems for the defense. So um, I, I don't know. It's a, it's an embarrassment of riches every year Alabama. This year will be no exception because the offense seems like they could be even better compared to the 2018 season. Now, we're talking about Bama fatigue, and could Bama fatigue be something real or is it just in the minds of everybody and something that everybody just wants to talk about? Uh, here, here's a comment from BamaInsider.com regarding Bama fatigue. And I, and I want to hear from you. So please call in and let me know what you think about Bama fatigue. Has it set in on you? Do you know people who have a case of Bama fatigue? 205-686-3604 is the call-in number. Unfortunately, this is coming from Vegas Man. Unfortunately, I think it's a real thing with Bama fans. Not as much as the rest of college football world, mind you, but there is definitely some Alabama fans that are bored. You can see it at the games and especially noticeable during the spring game where attendance seems to continue to slide. However, if you truly suffer through post-stalling in the pre-Saban era, like me, then the fatigue is very minimal at best. That's coming from Vegas Man on BamaInsider.com. All right, on the show next, we got Bill from Buena Vista, Georgia. Yes, Kyle, this is Bill from Buena Vista, Georgia. I just want you to know that uh, Alabama needs to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and 
then throw the ball as a check down to one of the under, either the running backs or the receivers underneath. And then every now and then go for the long ball. We need to just wear these people down and make them tired. And I want to see them want to quit because we just crush them. So that's where we need to be. I tell Sarkeesian he needs to just pound on that ball. And then when we got a chance, throw it. But uh, we can crush these guys if we just do that. All right, thanks for the call. Uh, Bill from Buena Vista, Georgia, please call in again. Yeah, I mean, similar comments. I mean, I, I think a lot of the fans, a lot of the callers want to see Alabama pound that rock. You have Najee Harris, Brian Robinson, Trey Sanders, Jerome Ford. You know, it's it's incredible the amount of talent. But I think when we, when we talk about the run game, wh- what about this offensive line? Are they going to be capable enough to open up the lanes? Now you have your bookend offensive tackles, Alex Otherwood and Jedrick Wills. But I think the interior of Alabama's offensive line are where the questions are currently. We've talked about this before. You've got Chris Owens, who will be a new starter at center. You have Deontay Brown, who could potentially be that left guard. You have Matt Womack. You have Landon Dickerson coming in. You have Evan Neal. A lot of guys to shift around. And I'm curious to see what Kyle Flood does not only for the opener, but as Alabama starts to move forward, how he mixes up this offensive line because the talent is obviously there, but which five guys are best for the 2019 season? Good call in, Bill from Georgia. All right, next on the show, we got uh, Jeff. He's calling from Selma, Alabama. Hi, this is Jeff Stapleton. I'm calling from Selma, Alabama. Uh, My question is, do you think that it, it would would it be better to have a an offense that runs and throws the football, or do you think that it would be better if they just did one? I mean, I'm I'm curious to know because um, I think that it would be better if they did a uh, running and a throwing. You know, kind of keep the keep the whoever they're playing guessing. Um, and I have another question. Uh, the defense. Everybody's talking about it. They're saying good things and everything. And I'd, I'd love. I want to see it. I want to see them them strive to to uh, to get past what happened last year because everybody's talking about Clemson and how they just drilled us, which is true, and they did. But um, I, I, I'm, I'm 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 the the A Day game. I seen a chip on the defense's shoulder that. It's gonna be hard to knock that off, um, and the offense was, you know, playing tough too. Um, so <clears throat> that's all I wanted to say. And um, uh, roll tide! Can't wait for the season to start. All right, good call in from Jeff, calling from Selma, Alabama. I, I once again, I mean, I, I think a balanced approach is probably best. You know, it, it's great to see Alabama put so many points on the board, but at the same time. Um, you can't be one-dimensional in any facet of the game. Now, regarding the defense and what you saw during the springtime, I I would completely agree. I think Alabama's new defense for the 2019 season has a lot to prove, Um, especially in the secondary. You know, you you lose some key guys, especially at the safety position with Deontay Thompson. Um, Some new uh, corners are going to emerge. I think Patrick Sertan will continue to evolve into one of the top corners in college football. Trayvon Diggs has a lot to prove coming back from his foot injury Um, across the middle of the field. The linebackers are there, but Terrell Lewis has something to prove. Uh, The inside linebacker uh, position is still a lot of question marks. Dylan Moses, but who's going to be that other backer? So um, the defensive ends, Raekwon Davis, LeBron Ray. Raekwon Davis has a lot to prove. So these guys have to enter the 2019 season on the defensive side with a chip on their shoulder. I know we've been talking a lot about the offense and the balance that we want to see, but from the defensive perspective, I think we want to see the defense really lock in and bring it, get after the quarterback, see a lot of these defensive linemen get to the quarterback more, cause a lot of ruckus in the backfield, and kind of see some Alabama defense of the past under Saban. And I think we're going to see that. Just think what Saban has done with the coaching staff, who he's added to the coaching staff, right? Sal Sinceri, Brian Baker, Charles Kelly. Uh, it's an incredible defensive coaching staff, and it was clearly an emphasis for Nick Saban following the 2018 season was the defense. And you know what they say about defense. Defense wins 
championships. All right, here's our next caller. What's going on, Kyle and Alabama Football Nation? This is Caleb Davis uh, calling from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I had a couple points I wanted to bring up to you uh, regarding the offense. I know you did a video on it today, but I wanted to bring this into light. Uh, you know, Sark is back. Tua, we all know what, what he can do. He's got plenty of weapons. Of course, you got Waddle. You got Judy. You got the freshman Mechie. You got uh, Devontae Smith. Uh, the backfield is loaded. Najee Harris, Trey Sanders, Jerome Ford, Brian Robinson. I mean, there's so many weapons. My concern is uh, keeping Tua up on his feet. And, you know, our offensive line depth, is, it's, it's insane. You know, we've signed five-star Evan Neal. He might play a role this year. We have the depth. I just wanted to ask, what do you think about the offensive line uh, providing the protection that Tua needs? And it might not be so much as the O-line as Tua is just, you know, making smarter decisions whether to uh, – sorry, that's my one-year-old – whether to stay in the pocket – or scramble or, you know, do what he needs to do. So uh, just give me your thoughts on our O-line and how Tua can stay on his feet and how we can distribute the ball a little bit better and keep him healthy. Thanks, guys. Hey, Caleb, happy Father's Day, man. Yo, I've certainly had kids crying in the background before. Um, Yeah, I mean, I I think you bring up a great point. Probably the most interesting point in the entire show is – keeping Tua healthy, right? I mean, if something bad was to happen to Tua, if he's to go out during the season, I mean, I'll be straightforward. I think Alabama would be in a world of trouble. So it all comes down to not only Tua getting rid of the football, making smart moves, getting um, sliding instead of putting his head down when he does have to escape the pocket, but a lot of the pressure comes on the offensive line to keep Tua upright for the 2019 season. Nothing can happen to Tua. Nothing can happen to Tua. I can't say it enough because Alabama does not have the experience behind him to win a national championship. Yes, Mac Jones has made a world of improvement. He can hold the rope, but is he? does he have enough experience and talent to play in a marquee game against LSU, against Auburn, and win those type of games later in the season? Does he have enough to win in the SEC championship or in a college bowl game? We don't know that, but talent-wise – He's he's not Tua, right? He's not Jalen Hurts. And behind him, you have Talia, Tungo Valoa, and Paul Tyson, who are very inexperienced coming into Alabama. Yeah, those are big-time guys, but clearly they don't have the experience to play in a big-time atmosphere just yet. So it all comes down to the offensive line and back to Kyle Flood. Which five are the best for running the football? The best in pass pro, which which is the best combination to put in front of Tua to lead Alabama's offense for the 2019 season. We've talked about it before. Alex Leatherwood returns, right? SEC All-American by league coaches. Judge Wills, a ton of experience. Matt Womack, he's back for the 2019 season. He, he's been injury plagues, but a lot of people like what Matt Womack brings. Evan Neal, Deontay Brown. Now, remember, Deontay Brown's going to be suspended for the first four games. But Emil Ikior and an Evan Neal, very capable. You have Landon Dickerson, who just got added to the roster as a graduate transfer. Chris Owens. I think Chris Owens has some big shoes to fulfill. A couple years ago is Bradley Bozeman. Last year, Ross Pierce Baker. Those are some... Those are some very talented and experienced linemen, and Chris Owens taking over for those two. That's an important role. So it all comes down to the offensive line protecting Tua, but a great question from Caleb, and uh, I think we'll end there. So once again, call into the show, 205-686-3604. Let me know what you want to talk about. Let me know what you think about Bama fatigue. I'm going to dive more into that as we move into this week. And then kind of a footnote for the tail end of next week, we have the Rivals Five Star Challenge in Atlanta, Georgia. Andrew Bone and myself will be in ATL reporting on some of the nation's top prospects that will be in Atlanta competing at the Five Star Challenge. We'll have tons of videos, interviews, podcasts, all sorts of stuff coming to you from the ATL. And that'll be next Monday and Tuesday right here on BamaInsider.com or our YouTube channel. Hey, if you're a college student, hit me up, Kyle at BamaInsider.com. If you want to get behind the paywall and you want free 30 days to BamaInsider.com, hey, what do you have to lose? The promo code at checkout is simply Roll Tide. You know where I'm coming to you from. 
Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Love living here. I just dropped uh, a good nugget on why I love living in Tuscaloosa, aka T-Town. Man, I love the Southern hospitality. You guys are so warm and so friendly. And of course, you know, the barbecue is uh, is hard to deny. <laughs> I hope you have a great rest of your week. Good start. Be good people out there. I will catch you soon on BamaInsider.com. Until next time, my friends. Talk soon.